Look, up in the sky. It's not a bird, not a plane. It's a drone. Indoors and out, drones are everywhere. So much so that tomorrow, the Department of Transportation will announce a registration requirement for private drone ownership. It's expected to go into effect by Christmas. Of course, by then, a lot more drones will be flying. Our cover story is reported now by David Pogue of Yahoo Tech. Colorado farmer Greg Schreiner has a good eye for a good ear of corn. In my opinion, that's a beautiful ear. This summer, his crops got help from a rather non-traditional farm implement, a drone, a remote-controlled flying robot with a camera. Its pictures revealed a corn crisis, a dead zone that wasn't getting irrigated right in the middle of the field. We walked out into the field, walked into that area, found out that seven nozzles were clogged, which meant we weren't getting water on 37 acres. If we would have let it go, the potential was pretty huge for a loss. That drone came from a company called Agrobotics. Its founder is Tom McKinnon. Right now, you know, we're selling drones as fast as we can make them. We've come a long way from military drones. Now there's a new crop of small, sophisticated drones that anyone can fly. And they're transforming all kinds of fields, not just corn fields. Filmmakers and photographers use them. They can get aerial shots where helicopters dare not go. Engineers use them to inspect utility lines and pipelines far away. Realtors take video of houses for sale and even fly through them. Law enforcement uses them to patrol borders. A Belgian student even designed an ambulance drone that can deliver emergency equipment. It's an emerging art form, and it's really amazing. Randy Slavin owns an aerial cinematography company called Yeah Drones. He's also the founder of the New York City Drone Film Festival. I talked him into giving me a little driver's ed with his $3,000 drone. So how hard are they to fly, exactly? Really simple. Even you can fly it. Oh, thank you. All right, so left stick makes the drone go up and down. Exactly. Now the right stick will make it slide right or slide left or forward and backward. And if you let go, what'll it do? Well, this one has GPS, so it'll just stay exactly where it is. So, drones are awesome. Drones are easy to fly. Drones are changing the world for the better. Right? Well, most of the time. As you've no doubt seen, drones also make headlines for the wrong reasons. Five people were injured when this drone crashed into the crowd. Secret Service officers combed the White House grounds after this drone crashed into a tree on the South Lawn. There have been more than a dozen cases of drones disrupting firefighting efforts. They make frightening flying weapons. And maybe scariest of all, drones could get in the way of airplanes. Close calls between drones and airplanes are skyrocketing, according to a new report from the FAA. In Clearly, there's a battle brewing. On one side, people who are excited about the enormous potential of drones. On the other, people who worry about noise, privacy, and safety. We have the most complicated airspace in the world, and uh, these new entrants, these unmanned aircraft, would be just another layer of uh, objects that we have flying in our airspace. Anthony Fox is the U.S. Secretary of Transportation. He oversees the FAA, which oversees the safety of our skies. The FAA has been working to come up with new rules to govern drones in America, but it hasn't been easy. So can you characterize the two um, warring sides of the rulemaking process? Isn't there two sides? <laughs> <laughs> How many are there? <laughs> there are a lot of sides of this one. And which side are you on? <laughs> <laughs> I'm on the side of safety. <laughs> Secretary Fox likens the arrival of drones to the dawn of the first automobiles. And all of a sudden, this new entrant is trying to occupy the same space as horse-drawn carriages. In some respects, that's where we are. We're trying to integrate this new use in a space that's been occupied by airplanes helicopters, hobbyists, and general aviation for so long. The FAA distinguishes between flying a drone for fun and flying one for money. Today, you're allowed to fly an amateur drone as long as you keep it five miles away from airports, below 400 feet, and within your sight. 
you can fly a drone for commercial purposes only with special permission from the FAA. But the FAA has proposed a new set of rules for commercial drones that would probably go into effect next year. A lot of companies are nervously watching to see how restrictive they're going to be, especially Google and Amazon, which have huge plans to start delivering customer orders by drone. Prime Air is a future delivery service that will get packages to customers within 30 minutes of them ordering it online at Amazon.com. Paul Meisner is in charge of public policy for Amazon. What if I'm not home? It gets delivered to your doorstep or wherever you want it. You are just like it would be if it were delivered by the UPS truck. Last year, Amazon made this video to show how Prime Air might work. But the drones they're building and testing now are very different and still secret. These are highly automated drones that can take care of themselves in, in many respects. They have what is called sense and avoid technology. That means basically seeing or detecting and then avoiding obstacles. Amazon is watching the FAA like a hawk. If the new rules wind up too restrictive, Amazon Prime Air might never get off the ground. Well, what happens if the technology is ready but the FAA still doesn't have regulations in place for Amazon. We're going to be trying to deploy Prime Air everywhere we operate. So there's no reason why the United States must be first. We hope it is. But here's the thing. We enjoy the world's safest air travel because we have a terrific air traffic control system. Maybe the answer to the drone problem is right over our noses. Is it useful to say it's kind of like the air traffic control system, but for drones? Uh, that's a good uh, analogy. Parimal Kapartikar is in charge of NASA engineers who are working with the FAA to develop an air traffic control system for drones. How would it work? I'm, I'm a uh, filmmaker and I would like to fly along the Golden Gate Bridge and shoot that. What, what would I do? You can actually file your flight plan or a trajectory into the system. Uh, you could get that airspace reservation for that particular operation. So he has to stay within those dotted lines. He has to stay within those dotted lines. Uh, Engineer Thomas Prevo is head of NASA's Airspace Operations Lab. He showed me some hypothetical drone flights in a simulation of the new system. So, so before each flight started, they, they essentially submitted an operations plan into the system. A flight plan? Kind of a flight plan, yeah. And here is an operation that was a, supposed to be a pizza delivery over the Golden Gate Bridge. <laughs> a pizza but, delivery? Yeah. And, but but it, you can't fly over the Golden Gate Bridge currently because it's a national park. So it got rejected. Ah. NASA has started testing the new air traffic control system outside the lab. So what you're saying is you tried it and it we, worked. We have tried and it works. <laughs> <laughs> and not a moment too soon. The FAA predicts that a million drones will be sold this holiday season. What's their appeal? Looks good. Well, consider this year's winner of Randy Slavin's Drone Film Festival, a video about Superman strapping a video camera to his head. It's super entertaining and amazing. I mean, still, every time I watch it, it gives me chills to imagine what it would be like to be him, to fly, like, on his shoulders or something. Are you hurt? And in the end, that's why drones are so irresistible. That's why they're our certain future. Because, come on, who wouldn't want to be Superman? Oh